Welcome. In this video, we're going to solve for the components of the electric field at a point in space from the contributions of two different charges. We're not concerned about whether those two charges attract one another, repel one another, what the force is. That's not part of the problem. We're looking at a point in space and asking what is the electric field at that point from the two charges? Okay, let's remember <clears throat> that the equation for electric field from a charge is just the numeric part, K sub E times the charge over R squared. R is the distance from that charge. Now, we'll use different uh, rules, of course, to give the direction of the electric field. This is to help us to get the number. Let's consider the two charges. In this picture, there's the triangle. Indicates where the point in space I'm interested in. Then we have the two charges. We want to consider what they do. Remember that for a negative charge, the field points toward the charge. That means from this point where I'm interested, the field is going to go straight up through that point to that charge. Now, <clears throat> there are also contributions coming from other directions. I mean, not there. The field goes inward from every direction into that. From uh, negative charge. But we don't care. We're only concerned about one point in space. Let's forget about that. For the positive charge, the field points out in every direction. But for the point we're interested in, the electric field is going to be going straight left from that charge. Of course, it also goes up, down, it goes to the right. We're only concerned about the components that come through that point. There are point, there's also a field going out like that. We're not interested in that. We're not interested in whether the two charges attract or repel. We want to know the contributions from those two charges to the field at that location of that triangle. So <clears throat> if I ask you before you calculate anything, what will be the direction of the electric field? We'll give them those two components, one up, one to the left. We know the field vector is going to be pointing some direction to the upper left. It has an upward component and component to the left. In general, it's much more useful to know the components of a vector, EX, E, Y, E, Z, then to know the length of the vector or the angle of the vector. It's just very useful in terms of what you want to solve and so forth. Know the components of the vector. That's what I'm interested in solving for. The components of this vector. So we know it goes to the upper left. But we want those components. Now, if I consider a coordinate system, x-axis, y-axis. We could also have a z-axis coming out of the screen. Let me make that look more like a y. But for now, we'll stay with two dimensions, x and y. So we see that in this picture, the vertical component, y, is going to come only from this charge right here. There's this negative charge is going to determine EY. The negative charge, because the field line points up through the point, the negative charge does not contribute an X component at that location. On the other hand, the horizontal component comes from the positive charge, EX. Be 
because this positive charge is directly right of the point, and the field is heading directly left, horizontal, positive charge does not contribute in this problem, does not contribute a vertical component, does not contribute a y component. If we ask for some other location, you know, above or below that positive charge, it would be different. But in this picture, that positive charge contributes the x component, negative charge contributes the y component. Let's start with, let's solve for the x component. Now, I'm going to start with the equation KEQ over R squared. Before I call it the x component, let's simply call it E from the positive charge. Let's put in the Coulomb constant. 8.99 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. The value of that positive charge, 40 nanocoulomb, that's 40 times 10 to the minus 9 coulomb. divided by r squared. The positive charge is 6 centimeters from that location. So 6 centi is 10 minus 2. We enter that before we square it. Looks like that. <clears throat> okay, you can go directly to your calculator if you like. I don't like fiddling with all the powers of 10 on the calculator. So I'm going to gather up numbers, gather up powers in ten, of 10, see what I get. So the numbers, I have my 8.99. <clears throat> I have my 40. I have 6 squared in the denominator. Let's look at the powers of 10. 10 to the 9, 10 to the minus 9. Divided by 10 to the minus 2 squared. If you square 10 to the minus 2, you get 10 minus 4. What about the unit? Let's consider the unit. Okay, meter squared cancels meter squared. Coulomb will cancel one of the Coulomb squared. We're left with, for the unit, Newton per Coulomb. Okay, so now the calculator part right here. 8.99 times 40 divided by 6 squared, that's 36. If you work that out, what you will find is this is equal to 9.99. <clears throat> the powers of 10, 10 to the 9 cancels 10 to the minus 9 divided by 10 to the minus 4. 10 to the minus 4, when it comes to the top, becomes 10 to the plus 4. Newton per coulomb. 9.99 times 10 to the 4 Newton per coulomb. Okay, that's what we solved for this E plus. But is that equal to the X component? Not exactly. The x component points to the left. Let's go up to our coordinate system. If you look at the x axis, to the right is positive, to the left is negative. Likewise for the y axis. To the top is positive, down is negative. So 
to the left is negative, EX must be negative. Whenever you do a, a problem calculating a vector, the equation gives you a number. The fact this number is positive means we calculated the field for a positive charge. But to determine the direction, we have to look at the picture. We're looking at a location to the left of a positive charge, which means the field is pointing to the left, which means it is negative. The x component of this vector is negative this number, 9.99, 10 to the 4. Newton per coulomb. <clears throat> That's the electric field at that point. So we calculated a positive number. If we had been to, let's say, to the right of this thing, it would have been a positive component. If we had been above it, it would have been a positive component. But if we're to the left of it or below it, the field going outward shows up as a negative component. So e to the x is minus 9.99, 10 to the fourth, Newton per coulomb. Okay. Now let's solve for the y component. We will start by saying we want the field from the negative charge. Ke, 8.99, 10 to the 9, Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. The charge minus 25 nanocoulomb. Nano, 10 to the minus 9, Coulomb. The distance in this problem, 3 centimeter. 3 times 10 minus 2 meter quantity squared. <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, if we look at the units, we have meter squared, we'll cancel meter squared, coulomb cancels one power of coulomb, newton per coulomb. Let's gather up our numbers. So it's equal to, there's 8.99 times the charge minus 25 divided by this distance, three quantity squared. There's 8.99 minus 25. 3, the denominator is squared. Powers of 10, 10 to the 9, 10 to the minus 9. Denominator 10 to the minus 2 squared becomes 10 minus 4. Unit Newton per Coulomb. Now, the calculator, we enter those numbers, we find that is equal to minus 25.0. Powers of 10, 10 to the 9, cancels 10 to the minus 9. 10 to the minus 4 in denominator comes 10 to the plus 4 in the numerator, Newton per Coulomb. We calculated minus 25 times 10 to the 4 Newton per Coulomb. However, in our picture, the y component points upward. Remember the coordinate system? It's a positive y component. So, but we calculated a negative number. The negative number means we calculated the field for a negative charge. Negative number means it's going toward that charge. You have to look at the picture. If we were above that charge, the field would point down, would be negative. But we are below that. 
So the field pointing upward is positive. It's the characteristic of vector problems. You calculate a number, but before you interpret it, we can interpret a positive number means it's a positive charge, negative a negative charge. But in terms of x and y components, you have to look at the picture. This y component is going to be a positive. We calculate minus 25. It's going to be a positive 25.0. 10 to the 4th Newton per Coulomb. So I did this to illustrate. <clears throat> we calculated for a positive charge, either the x is a negative component. We calculated for a negative charge, but either the y is a positive component. Depends upon the picture, how one thing is oriented relative to another. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, with that, you need to be prepared. You have the equation, you get a number, you have to go to the picture and determine the orientation, direction of those vectors to determine those vector components. And typically, uh, you have the components, you don't really need to keep going and you know, do length and angle and so forth. That's the end of the video. I thank you again for watching all the way to the end.